I think this is a story that needs heard, um, especially today. Uh, back in August of 2019, I started to hike the Benton Mackay Trail. And um, on the first day of the hike, everything was great. I got my mileage in, felt great. Um, woke up the next morning and was sicker than a dog. Um, I basically could not keep water down. I couldn't keep food down. Um, and when I do these long distance hikes, you plan for so much time to get to a resupply point where your food is at. And I stretch my resupply points out generally six, sometimes seven days. Um, on this particular hike, my resupply point was um, on the sixth day, um, potentially on the seventh. And on the second day when I got sick, I literally, if I took a drink of water, I would be, uh, it would be coming out the other end of my body within about five minutes. Um, the same thing really for any kind of food um, and because of that because of that I got dehydrated and weakened very quickly because you know you're you're hiking 20 to 30 miles a day or attempting to you're you're attempting to hike you're gonna have to excuse this camera you're attempting to put in 20 to 30 miles a day under the best of circumstances and that's assuming that you have enough calories to keep you going but because I was um, sick I couldn't keep food down so I wasn't getting any calories and I got weak pretty quick within four or five hours of hiking um, so instead of getting 20 to 30 miles in on the second day I, I think I got around eight miles and on the second day, it wasn't a big deal because I'm thinking, you know, I've, I'm, I'm okay. I, I can make up the miles. I can do some overnight hikes or something to that effect. And the third day was kind of the same way. And the fourth day was kind of the same way. So when I should have put in 60 miles, um, between 60 and 90 miles, I'd only put in about... 25 to 30 so um, the the bad thing about that is is where I was hiking at um, I, I wasn't really close to a town where I could get off the trail and get enough food to last me to my resupply point so on the um, on the fifth day I had also hit a stretch of trail that was known to not have very many water sources so the day that I was actually starting to feel a little bit better and I'm ready to to go and just really push myself and make up some miles you know and, and at least do better than the you know approximately 10 miles I was getting the previous days while I was sick there was no water <laughs> the water sources that were known along that dry section were dried up also and I was really struggling because I was weak from being sick I was dehydrated I I still had um, two or three days of food left but really it was going to take me you know a, a lot longer to get there so um, anyways it always seems like I have these spiritual things happen to me on these long hikes. And it's not something I ask for, but, you know, I do the long hikes to kind of root my feet back on the ground and kind of like find myself. But I don't ask for these spiritual events to happen. And anyways, so after like the second or third potential water source was bone dry, I, I was in trouble. I I had stopped salivating even if I put like because I always take hardtack candy and gum 
uh, on hikes with me. So even if I put gum or hardtack candy in my mouth, I wasn't salivating at all. There, I was dehy I was really bad dehydrated. And um, looking at the map to see if maybe there was a potential source of water, like there wasn't really nothing. Um, there wasn't like ravines or creeks or you know even if I had to walk a couple miles off trail to get to it I was willing to do that but just looking at the map there wasn't really much available and uh, there, there come a point where I was literally barely able to walk um, I had stumbled a couple times and somehow I ended up on my knees that's basically what I'm getting at I ended up on my knees and I was basically asking God like if you want me to make it you're going to have to help me and anyways I you know, got the strength to move forward and just out of the blue there was like water it was a couple miles later in a place there wasn't supposed to be water. There was water. It was basically a mud puddle. Um, I don't know, maybe four or five inches deep and five or six feet in diameter. And I was thankful for that mud puddle in the middle of nowhere where nobody said anything about there could be water there. You know, it was basically... An, indentation in the trail, a sunken part in the earth that was full of water and I don't recall it raining. Like the the couple of days leading up to that point. So basically I'm I'm filtering water and drinking it just as fast as I can and you know saw your filter, saw your flow filter. I maybe drank four quarts of water, filled up all my water bottles, and I actually took my GPS out and I marked, put a waypoint, and when I named it, I named it God's Water. I had asked for water a few miles before. I was in, I was in bad shape. Like, I, 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 you can't, you can't understand how probably close I was to, you know succumbing to dehydration if you don't have any spit and you can't pee you, you're in bad shape well long story short i stand up full of water all my water containers are full and i seen something out of the corner of my eye and i walk over and hanging on a tree limb is this bracelet I don't know if you can see it. It says, God is great. And we're, we're talking about, we're not close to any like trailheads where people would walk. You know, granted, this is a long distance known trail. Why would somebody leave that there? I, I never understood that. But I put the bracelet on. You know, I just kind of felt like it was there for me. So, so I kept the bracelet. All right, so day six comes. And I only had six days of food, right? But I'm still three days away from my resupply point. How do I make a day of food last three more days? And it's like, do I conserve the food? You know, it's 2,500 to 3,000 calories. Do I stretch that out over three days? Or do I just eat it? But I was so hungry from being sick that like, while I was sick, I was, I was conserving some of the food because it made no sense to, to really eat it. So, but once I got better, I basically devoured all the extra food except for 
you know, staying on my schedule of what I packed, you know, this is Monday's food, this is Tuesday's, this is Wednesday's, this is Thursday's. Um, but basically it come down to where I had not enough food to get me to the end of, to where my resupply was at. There, there was no way. And I needed those calories because if, if you hike and you run out of food, say, a day early, just one day early, that, that one day is going to be a slow day. You're not going to be able to move at three miles an hour up and down mountains on zero calories. You might have some body fat your body can burn. But when you're burning 8,000 calories a day and you're only eating about 3,000, you don't have a lot of body fat um, after you've been on the trail for a while. So, anyways, I'm really struggling with, like, I, I've really messed up. Like, I'm going through my head. I've, I've really messed up. I didn't expect to get sick. But I got sick, and now I got to deal with the results, which was dehydration, and now I'm out of food. And, you know, I'm, I'm walking maybe a mile, mile and a half at speed, when normally I'm at about three miles an hour, give or take. You know, uphill's obviously slower, downhill's a little bit faster, but average, normally I average about three miles an hour. And I'm, I'm walking at about a mile, mile and a half miles an hour. And, uh just really struggling. My muscles are tensed up from the lack of calories and protein. Like, just really starting to cramp up. So I'm moving slower and I'm walking along and again, I'm like asking God, like, I, I need some help. Like, I, I know I ask you for help and somehow I got water where it shouldn't have been. And I, I don't ever ask for help. You know, I'm, I'm not even a person like, I don't even, I can't remember the last time I was in a church. And people always want to question like, you know, well, how can you be religious or Christian or whatever? You don't even go to church. Well, you know, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. You don't have to go to church if you're religious you you have your own beliefs and your own thoughts and and that that's kind of the way I've always been um, so anyways I'm asking for help again and uh, I I finally got you know, it was starting to get dark and I finally get to a place to camp and there's there's literally no food in my backpack I had a few pieces of hardtack candy that I kind of wanted to stretch out but you know a piece of hardtack candy might be what 20 or 30 calories like it's it's not gonna regenerate the body after hiking all day so to bed on an empty stomach I, I think I might have had a couple coffee packets and some hot chocolate or something like that so I think I had a I think I mixed a cup of hot coffee and chocolate. Get up the next day and my muscles are just cramped. Like I literally woke up and stood up and kind of stumbled trying to catch myself because my muscles just wouldn't work. And I've still got two more days of this to go with zero food. I, I probably still had like two days worth of coffee and hot chocolate but I had zero food so once again I'm like I'm asking God like you you need to show me a sign you know that you exist and if you exist I need help you know might not have been that word those exact words but that's basically what I was asking like I, I need a sign like help me I, I need help so uh, later on that day I'm walking along and 
again, I'm I'm not near trailheads. I'm not near, you know, these are long stretches of the Bent Mackay Trail. People call it west to waste. If you're a southbounder on the Appalachian Trail, if you were to get off on the Benton Mackay Trail, that's considered west, westerly to waste because there's Bent Mackay Trail is really an uneventful, rugged, very rugged trail. Not a lot of traffic, and and it's because it's a very rugged trail. Um, I had not passed any other hikers on the trail. So there wasn't like I could ask anybody looking at the maps. I didn't, wasn't like I could walk five or 10 miles out of my way to get food somewhere and at least that section of the trail that I was at. So anyways, I'm walking along and just really almost at a crawl space. And there was a part that I come up over this hill and the trail kind of flattened out for maybe, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 yards and I saw something laying on the trail and I was like, what is that? And as I'm getting closer and closer and it starts to, I was like, oh, I think that's pawpaws. And I'll show you a part of the video uh, that I recorded when I found those pawpaws. I found pawpaws on the ground. Now, if you know anything about pawpaws, they hit the ground ants devour them quickly but there was like maybe eight or ten pawpaws that the ants hadn't even touched yet ripe ready to be ate i ate all ten of them you know however many there was whatever was there the ants hadn't ate i ate and i think i took a knife and some of the ones the ants had ate i ate those too i just cut off where they had ate i needed the calories and so I recorded a short section on the trail of this event and then I start walking again and at about, I don't know, within five or ten minutes of finding the pawpaws, I again saw something out of the corner of my eye and it was this. And if you can see that, it says Luke. And the thing about Luke is the Gospel of Luke, that's that's the story, that's Jesus' story from his birth to, you know, that's his whole life story from birth to crucifixion to every, everything about Jesus. So um, anyways, this is 2020 and I posted an Instagram image when I found this because it was a pretty powerful way that I found it and and this was powerful also and I said that someday when I'm ready to tell the story I'll tell the story and and that day is right now today so now you know the story of why these sit with my Bible on my coffee table ever since I got home.